three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to the year end episode of the Have We Made It Yet podcast. My name is Josh Yang, the comedian co host of this podcast. I'm joined with Lucas John Ng the actor portion of this podcast. And we are here today to talk about the year that was in our podcast and really look back upon the beginnings of this podcast, but also the beginnings of the year and, and all the stuff that we had to deal through. So, so this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be our hindsight 2020 episode. Whew, clever. Yeah, it took it took 2020 years to get to this point in order to make that joke that everybody will be making around New Year's Eve in a couple of weeks time. But mm -hmm. in the meantime though, very important question. Oh man. Lucas, Lucas, hey, 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 hey. Uh-huh. Have you made it yet? Uh, as you can probably tell in and in, in where I am, it's a change of scenery. And this is just going to relate back to that question and the answer that will come. But no, I have not made it yet, though. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, right now I am quarantining back to my parents' basement. And if there's any consolation in, in the fact that I am not making it yet, it's that I am still comfortable and I still have my prized possession of my instant noodles that I've had ever since I was a kid. So... No, not yet. I have not made it yet in 2020. Mm. But Josh. Yes. Hey, hey man. Hey, man. What, what, what? Can you please answer this question with another joke, though? Oh, okay. I'll try. I'll try. Have you made it yet, Josh? I have not made it yet. But, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about it. But there are, like, some goals that have we've hit, may, maybe hit to a certain degree, then there are also goals that we haven't hit. Um, but one goal I can tell you is that once coronavirus or once this whole quarantine started, I made a decision in my life to grow out my hair. Oh, cool. Something that I've never done before in my entire life. And my hair is not the longest it's ever been. And now I'm entering that phase of the hair journey where it's now more comfortable tying it up. So you can kind of see. Oh, there it is. Whoa! Oh no! Oh no! It's it's got a little, <laughs> it's got a little little bounce there. You can kind of see it. Damn, man! It's it's my it's either my uh, Star Wars Padawan little thing there, or uh, I'll just turn into a samurai in a few in a few months. But uh, it is an is a new thing in terms of making it. Have I made it in my goal of? trying something different, taking this opportunity to, you know, change things up, <laughs> try, try things I've never done before. And I think, yes, in that aspect this year, I've kind of done it, but also, you know, comedy wise, everything took a downhill, you know, I haven't really done that. So <laughs> in order to, in order to uh, send off on a joke, let's go with a coronavirus joke that everybody's making essentially nowadays. Okay. But uh, okay, here's here, here's a coronavirus. It's a very simple coronavirus joke. Okay, so getting tested for coronavirus is like getting tested for an STI. If it's positive, you also have to tell everyone you came into contact with that you have it. Moral of the story though, wear protection. Though a mask probably has the same effectiveness as a condom when it comes to reducing pregnancies. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying you know, condoms are not effective? I'm saying masks are not effective when, <laughs> when, when using it as a prophylactic. Um, as a prophylactic. Is that what Pro it is? Pro prophylactic uh, no, I'm, I, I'm just throwing i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm just throwing big words out because as you may know i'm an egotistical sapiosexual so i tried i was just trying to turn myself on right there um that, that's a big ponytail energy yeah 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 i'm i'm i got the little bit of the g 
Jeez, it is actually this is the first time I've kind of seen it in this angle because I've yeah. only just started tie it realizing tying it up is better mm-hmm. but uh next stage is gonna be man bun but i'm see this is what it is i don't yeah. want it i don't want it to be like oh now i'm doing a man bun because it's it's the fat or whatever right. man buns man buns have been out of style for a while yeah. now now if i do it if uh-huh. i do it like it's a choice it's a conscious choice to look like that ironically look like that because you know it's out of style, so you still do it, and you're like, <laughs> it's ironic. <laughs> Is it? But then it's like, if it's ironic that I do it now that it's out of style, what if if I was doing it then and I tried to play it off as ironic, then I'd just be following the trend. <laughs> exactly. But now, okay, all right, then it could be ironic, even though I'm not going into it <laughs> trying to be <laughs> ironic. Actually, I, I kind of I'm kind of going into it to see if I can get the get the flow. Right. 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 Yeah, looks good yeah. though man looks good we'll see we'll see if uh you know when 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 it when there <laughs> still looks ridiculous to but, me. but i mean like you're not doing it for fashion right you're just doing more for practicality uh well putting it up yeah 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 i guess so yeah like practicality but i mean to a certain degree like you you i mean it does lend itself to a bit of like you know has some asian effect to it yeah yeah yeah. we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll we'll see in the new year but i you know i haven't gotten a full haircut since last february so that's crazy this is very much covid josh this is this is no other josh has existed before but okay enough i think Mm -hmm. we're past i think we're past the first yeah let's get let's get deeper into the hindsight (laughs) 2020 topic right lucas Mm -hmm. oh wow right in oh me okay cool yeah, Let's do yeah, this. yeah. Because I've been talking too much about my hair. Um, so Lucas, yeah. Hindsight 2020. Looking back, what is? Uh-huh. I guess we could just go exchange. Like wh- you got one, I got one, you got one. What <laughs> is one thing in hindsight you think, knowing that the world is it is now? Uh, what would you do different? Um, okay, so I did have this one thought leading into this topic that you did want to bring up here. Um, you know. Hitting the ground running in 2019, I was like, God damn, man, I'm going to, you know, 2019, I booked my first gig and then I got into my first series and everything like that. So I'm like, okay, 2019, it's like my first five months into acting and I'm getting all these like kind of cool gigs and everything like that. So I was like, 2020 is going to be it, man. I'm going to, I'm going to be on Riverdale, man. I, I'm going to do so much cool shit. Um, but of course it never panned out. And right now it's we're recording this on December 17th, right? So there's another 14 days left of 2020. I doubt I will get any of those big gigs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So if, if there was anything that I can bring from my lesson and learning about 2020, it's that be okay with things not working out and be okay with your expectations not panning out because at the end of the day, our, our craft is extremely volatile. When we book things, when we don't book things, it, are, it is really beyond our control, if anything. Um, and if there was any lesson that I can carry even after 2020 and carry into 2021 and on and on and on, it's to, to better handle rejection better. I know that's a really cloudy way of saying that, but it's, but if there's anything that I'm learning more and more right now, it's that if you do get your big peak and you start going like this, watch out for what's going to come after that because something else all will always level out. So continue practicing your craft and everything like that, but make mm. sure that you are always willing that when the times are getting really good to also keep your head steady to make sure that it won't always go like this, that eventually things will always go back down and level out. So, you know, keep your highs balanced. And that's the main thing that I'm learning right now. Mm. So with Josh... Yes. But have you been learning about yourself in 2020? 2020, looking back, I mean, I feel like I've, you know, the opportunities in comedy that I really wanted to get into, I, same uh-huh. with you, like the first, first six months or so, like went really well, better than uh-huh. I could have expected uh-huh. in terms of like getting on stage, getting a good reaction being able to do some cool shows and like being able to get a a nice, nicely shot uh, set out there in, in January. Yeah. 
that to this day is still not yet ready. I think probably in 2021, everything's going to look up. But mm-hmm. um, I think other than that, you know, there, I mean, there are ways of like adapting to the situation that I think we did well, you know, like with, with everything getting shut down, even though there might not, not have been, you know, opportunities to go out, do more comedy shows. I f- could focus a bit more on doing the podcast and then doing the other podcast, the Sleep mm-hmm. with Josh one. Um, I think what, in terms of looking back on what we, sh- what I could have, or what we could have done, uh-huh earlier would be uh get get in on that tiktok game that's that's what i i realized it's like yo i can't i just came across a uh a, a, what is it another podcast on uh on tiktok and it's two other asian guys uh who are from toronto they're oh, younger cool. they're they're like young they're young, like young dudes and i think they talk about i only saw a couple uh clips but i think they talk about more like kind of like they're perspectives opinions on certain pop culture things where like their uh-huh. experience is partying and yeah they put up uh their first episode maybe in november uh-huh. and like already they've gotten like thousands of views and like thousands of subscribers and their their tiktok whatever thing has like over 100k followers and i realized that my my initial idea was like my my thought of how the algorithm you know how the tiktok algorithm it it like just it pushes your content out there and randomizes it to people but it'll right. it'll try to help you show a, uh show your tiktoks in front of a large group of people just so you can get a hit of that like oh i got a bunch of people liking it and <laughs> then that forces you to do it again i think that's that's my interpretation of what how the algorithm works cool uh i think they've been able to utilize that and be able to like put that out there and then just have the algorithm do the work for them to get in front of people that would huh. normally not find it <laughs> so now that i know that i'm thinking like wow maybe we should have we should have done that earlier which also means like that's what we're gonna that's what i'm gonna try to figure out in the new year that's what we're gonna we're gonna do in the new year we're gonna put all these clips <laughs> on tiktok and then we'll see if the algorithm works in our favor Is that podcast called big in japan bunny chance no, it's called uh, Jumpers Jump. Oh, Jumpers Jump, like Jumpers yeah. Jump. Oh, okay. I I assume it's some kind of slang. Thing. Is it like a know. shooter's gonna shoot kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I I, I think so. I oh, mean, okay. kids, kids these days, Lucas. Am I right? Oh man. Although we might look at Josh, but we're definitely not twenty-two. Yeah, we're not Taylor Swift twenty-two. Do you know she's like one year, just one year younger than me? Is she? She's 31. She started really young, too. Oh, yeah, man. Did you see her yeah. latest doc, that Miss, Miss Americana? Wait, that was that was her. I thought that was like the, I thought that was a series. Uh no, no. That's yeah, that's Mrs. America. But there's a oh. Netflix doc called Miss Americana. No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um can I can I share a quick story that I that I think is kind of poignant? Uh, I don't know, Lucas. I, I feel like sharing stories isn't really this, isn't really the purpose of this format. Um, really, I feel like long form. Okay, I'll stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Hit, hit me. Okay, so th- this is this is just also another big lesson that I've learned in 2022 or 2022. T O O. Mm. Um, so okay, you know how I booked like Age of Samurai and everything like that, but I don't think I ever told like the story of how I actually booked it. And the resulting last two weeks that I've had to deal with some other stuff about that show. Um, So originally, okay. So backstory, I'm on an, I'm with a new agency now, but my former agent, um, I was asking her about the show. I'm like, Hey, can I please get an audition for that show? I think I'd be great for it. Some back and forth and everything, but eventually she didn't give me an audition for it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll be resourceful and I'll get it myself. Mm. So I'm also with a background agency and um, they were looking for people with Asian ethnicity to go on that show to just play like random samurais, you know, just basically stand in the corner, not have any lines and just, and just sit, sit around and stand around. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest lessons that I've learned right now is when you're first starting out in any big craft, be it comedy or be it acting, your biggest ability is your availability. Yeah. So um, uh, my background agency booked me for this one job, one day job. 
uh, for that samurai show, Age of Samurai. So I get there and, um, you know, I'm walking around the set and everything like that, really tired because it's like 4 a.m. It's all dark, we're in Guelph. And uh, one of the producers, like, just looks to me. He just points to me. He's like, hey, are you Matthew Kim? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, really? Okay. I keep walking around and everything like that. And, uh, and I hear the producer just saying, hey, is, is, where's Matthew Kim? Where's Matthew Kim? He's supposed to be here by now. And I'm like, oh, fun. Okay, keep walking around. Mind your own business. That's what you're supposed to do on set. Just mind your own business. The same producer then comes back to me and just says, you're not Matthew Kim, are you? I was like, no, I'm not. He's like, what are you here to play? I was like, I'm only here for background. I'm only here for to, to, to stand around for the day and, and to do basically nothing. And to just be in costume and stand around for the day. So the producer then says, whatever. Matthew Kim isn't here. Um, I like your look. Do you, do you want to play the emperor of Japan? I'm like, fuck yeah. Okay, let, let's do this. Let's do this. It's like, okay, great. Get him into makeup and let's go. So I'm like, Matthew Kim, I, I guess he lost on his payday. God damn. So I, I get whisked around to makeup, quickly don on my costume and everything like that. You, you can see that whole costume on my Instagram if anyone's interested. I, I go on to set. I don't have any lines, thank God. I just have to look really intensely with the camera on me and everything like that. Thank God I had no lines because I can't speak Japanese and I can't memorize that fast anyways. And then they actually booked me on for two days that day. So that day I filmed and then met some great people, met a great crew. And then they're like, hey, can you also film tomorrow? We also got some extra scenes for you. I'm like, wicked. I'll do it. I'll do it. Of course. I got a pay bump. I got a real talent contract and everything like that. And I was like, oh, thank you, Matthew Kim, for not showing up. Amazing. Amazing. So next morning the same thing again i get into costume and they're like oh thank god you're here and everything so by the end of the second day i start shaking hands and i'm like okay you know things are gonna look up things are gonna look great i can't wait to see myself on, on camera and everything like that fast forward about like three weeks later i i don't actually have the the, the show i have to like go on amazon prime to, to find it and everything like that <sighs> long story short though they cut my scenes, but oh, <laughs> it's part of it. It's part of it, right? So, so I learned I learned two things from that from that one show. Again, usually you're not going to get the auditions that you want, and if anything, so just try your best to to do whatever you can do to get it, because sometimes eventually it will work out like that. And the second thing is your biggest ability in any craft is your availability. So just be present, be there be close to the actions to hopefully get you to some other spot. But also when you do book a show, don't tell too many people that you booked it yet. <laughs> That's fair. That is, that is yeah. fair. Yeah. Because like I, I heard of horror stories when like people bring their whole families to premieres and everything like that. And then the whole two and a half hour long movie, they're like, where were you? And then the guy who was just like supposed to be starring there, just sitting in a seat like this, like, please don't talk to me. <laughs> oh. Um, but hey, I learned three great lessons this year. So I'm hoping for bigger and better things for this, this next year. And um, with this new mentality, I'm sure things can probably progress a little bit further. Yeah, man. I mean, like I didn't, I didn't know about the the whole thing where like you got it because you were standing around and people were like, "Oh, that guy, that guy looks like an emperor." And it was like you just you just hit the timing right. And you took took uh, took the opportunity when it was given to you, yeah. So uh, that's a that's a cool. I, yeah, I never heard that story. I kind of I kind of heard later on that that you said that uh, your scenes your scenes got cut. But you know, <laughs> that happens to the best of celebrities and best of uh, celebrity actors. So uh -huh. hey, exactly. yeah, that's part of that's part of making it is not making it to the final cut. So that's that's totally as part of this what this what this is all about and. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Like, it's good to hear. And it's also good to hear, like, yeah, I, I feel like things will look up for you. For Definitely. Me too. <laughs> well, thanks. But like, I feel like you with a new agency now, you know, uh, you got some uh, more experience under your belt. You, mm -hmm. you got your expectations are now like through more experience. You'll just have different expectations, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like next year will be the year that uh, as things get back to normal, uh, people <laughs> will 
people are going to look to to Mr. Lucas Ng to play the emperor <laughs> in different things because the other emperor could not keep track of time. So you know what? Thank you, Matthew Kim. You know what? To this day, thank you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, thank you. Because you made 2020 and also 2019 a really memorable year for, for me. Mm-hmm. And same to you, Josh. Like once you get that footage, though, like it's going to look so good. And once <laughs> bars and whichever venues start opening up, you're going to do big things, man. I'm really excited for you for this upcoming year and also for the years after. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping I'm hoping to get the album and like then I'll be able to bring out the, <laughs> the long, the long hair. Oh, I'll, you're, you're keeping it like, oh, I, I'm keeping it for Fuck I feel yeah. like the foreseeable future. I want to I want to see how long I can grow it, you know, and maybe turn it into like a, a bun just because yeah. I feel like I've already passed the point of uh, no return now oh. where it's like if I cut it now, it'll be just. I know it'll be like another year before I get it back to that stage. Mm -hmm. So I feel like give it a try, see what happens. Maybe uh, I'll close out my twenties with long hair. And then on my 30th birthday, give it a haircut and start, start a new decade fresh. Would you go as long as Anto? Oh no, his is, I have no idea how long his, his, his feel, his are way past his shoulders. Oh yeah. So I have have no idea. And like, he's got like a full, like he can do like a double loop. Uh-huh. loop on it but um yeah i don't know we'll see either either that or i'll get just uh exhausted by the amount of like work you have to or upkeep or whatever it really is eh? a lot of conditioner yeah yeah a lot of a lot, uh, that's what i find conditioner is more important than shampoo totally is, is what i've learned so this year you know been uh been a progressive i understand the female experience a little bit better where it's like oh put makeup on for oh. the show okay okay and now I'm uh, trying to grow out my hair longer. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like I could relate a little bit more. Yeah. Just a little bit more. You know, I'm not saying that's the whole experience. I can't say like I know, you know, the entire female experience. But yeah, dude, when you putting said up that, the hair, I get it now. Yeah. When you said that, I thought you were just hinting that you, that you got a girlfriend or something. And I'm like, wow, putting that out on a podcast Whoa. like I'd be. Wow. <laughs> no no not yet not yet 2021 we'll see 2021 we'll see i mean with the coronavirus and you know don't use masks as contraceptive hmm. and uh stuff like that so yeah um well i mean like i guess we kind of heard heard what y- you wanted your expect do you have any other kind of goals for 2021 then um if i were just to get like quantitative i'd hmm. want to book six projects <laughs> six i want to book six because that equals out to like once every two months yeah so we'll see man we'll see i mean again be okay with n- having things not pan out yeah and um and just take care of your money stuff i, I need to uh i need to get a i, I need to i need to get more money mm. yeah money you need money to support you know, your passion. Yeah. You need money to support your creative endeavors and uh, money does make the world go around. Josh, what goals do you have, man? Um, probably try to get on stage again, the, True. the in the new year. And, uh, but I think in the meantime, I'm, I'm okay with not, you know, putting too much um, mind, or thought process into it yeah um if once it happens like i'll rev it back up but i feel Mm -hmm. like with the with the podcast and i'm trying to expand kind of my creative writing Mm -hmm. as a as an idea as a pursuit yeah um, on the side a little bit more um Mm -hmm. but other than that not not too much i just i just want to you know get out of the room now because before i used to i was more of a homebody i was more introspective uh uh, introverted and like i'd be fine with not going out now it's kind of like when things open up i want to push myself to go out a lot more oh dude if if i can i want to no no if you allow me i want to just be your best wingman Ooh, whoa uh and we'll just we'll just oh my god i can't believe i just did that that's (laughs) That's actually the worst. Uh, oh, if I ever hold on, that just goes to show you how 
How embarrassing. <laughs> Dude, that was the most socially enough thing I've seen know, you do in a long time. I know, time. I know. I feel like I've, yo, I've been in my room for too long. I, I, you know what it is? It's because I've, I've internalized those kinds of actions and motions in like pop culture <laughs> as like those characters that just like make fun of um, kind of, it's, it's like those sarcastic characters who make fun of people who like go out or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for some reason, I've just internalized those to be biological reactions to anything like that. So if I ever do that again, you promise me you'll slap me in the face. I will. Yeah. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe I did that on. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Um, here, uh, sh- should we do the announcement? All right. Oh. 2025 oh. right now. Ooh, yeah. I guess I guess we should. We should announce. Mm-hmm. Announce to the world. Yeah. Announce to our many, many dozens. <laughs> Many dozens. Many dozens. Many bake bakers dozens. Is that thirteen? That is just one more than a okay. dozen. Yeah. So thirty-nine yep. listeners then. Oh, so many. Um that uh yeah, we're gonna go on break because it's been a long year. It's been a rough year, you know, twenty twenty. Uh so after this episode, we're gonna go on break for two two weeks over the Christmas and then New Year's, and then we'll we'll come back in the new year with uh with uh, some a new episode January oh shoot what was it 12 12 12 12 January 12 <laughs> January 12 uh same Tuesday but we might have a special little bonus thing during the break so look out for that and yeah. um but other than that man i it's been quite a, it's <clears throat> been a heck of a year it's mm-hmm. been a heck of a year we're we're at 46 episodes right now so i think that's that's a fucking accomplishment yeah dude um yeah, like in the new year, of course, we'll have plenty more comedians, actors, creatives come on through and everything like that. But for all our former guests that have been on in 2019 and also for 2020, thank you so much. You have made the show incredibly, incredibly impactful for us. And I'm sure for all our listeners, too. So thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like I think we've been really touched with the willingness, willing willingness willingness of willingness. yeah willingness of our guests to to really you know offer up their time and come on and have us yeah. ask them some big uncomfortable questions where you kind of have you do kind of have to re you kind of have to like assess where you at you are at in your life mm-hmm. um and those are tough questions to to, to yeah. have to answer and and be put on you know on screen or be recorded on so i do appreciate the candor of our guests the willingness mm-hmm. to go deep into their experiences mm-hmm. um and uh yeah it's been it's been i feel like it's been a heck of an experience doing this with you lucas i i sure. I, I appreciate you lucas that's uh, that's that's one of the things i appreciate in 2020 josh likewise but i'm gonna appreciate you even more and more when i see you on stage man oh and and Dude. and if if I see you on a on a TV screen, I'm gonna be like, hey, I I do a podcast with that guy. Dude, it's been a blessing, man. Seriously, thank you for sticking through with this, man. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to many more episodes to come. Yeah, man. Uh, what are your handles, Josh? One last time for 2020. One last time for 2020 at Josh Yang Comedy across everything. Of course, the 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 sleep with. Uh, Josh podcast is is still going on, albeit a little slow. I, I do have to catch up on some episodes, but uh, you know, I've <laughs> there's already there's already forty five episodes out there. There's there's more than enough for you to get started. Um, so check that out at Sleep with Josh podcast. Uh, Lucas, what are your handles? Uh, everyone can find me at Lucas John Hing on Instagram and on Facebook. And I'm going to plug this podcast one more time for 2020. Oh, you do it. Plug it. Oh, all right, guys. You can find us at HWMIY podcast on Instagram and on YouTube. And for your audio stuff, wherever you listen to your podcast, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, are we on Google Play? Yes. Okay. Wherever you listen to your podcast. But if you want the good stuff, the video version of this, you can find us on YouTube at Have We Made It Yet podcast. And in the future, it will be on TikTok, right? Because we need, we need, we need that visibility. Oh my God, we need that visibility. <laughs> we need, we need that exposure. Yeah, but how, yeah. how relatable can we be? You know, though, I, 
Yeah, I'm not too sure. We're going to have to really dive into that format a little bit more to figure it out. Because I know I've seen a couple different podcasts pop up here and there on it. But it is always like, the it's kind of like live recording, not necessarily over Zoom. But the technicality, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Awesome. Okay. Keep safe, everyone. Uh, continue to wear your masks. And uh, happy holidays. See you all soon. Happy holidays and a happy new year. Fuck 2020. <laughs> There we are.